So we're well into the 80s now as I go through my collection. And the record I'd like to talk about this morning is that one right behind me. Or this one right in my hands. I made Killers from 1981. Now this particular one has always been my favourite of the first three records which, which I always grouped together because I think after Clive Burr left and was replaced by Nico McBrain on drums I think the sound changed. Not necessarily for the worse or the better, it just changed. It became, a, to me it became a different, a different beast. Um, it wasn't just the fact that Clive had left, there were other things as well. Um, but those first three records, for me, I always lump, lump them together. To me, they have a very similar sound. And of the three, Killers is my favourite. So it's the first Iron Maiden album with Adrian Smith, who would become a very important songwriter as time went on. It's the last one with Paul Diano, and it's almost entirely written by Steve Harris. Um, a lot of it well before even the first album, album came out. But that doesn't matter, because all this stuff, as far as I'm concerned, is from 1981. So, who exactly is in the band? Well, as I said, we have Steve Harris, Paul Diano, Adrian Smith, Dave Morey, and, as I mentioned before, Clive Burr on the drums. Now I think the reason this is my favourite is because I just love the production of it. Um, sonically I just think it sounds absolutely stunning. I think it sounds superb. It sounds better than the first one and I honestly think it sounds better than Number of the Beast. To my ear it just sounds better. So it's always been my favourite. And plus obviously I love the sleeve. How could you not love that? I mean, it's just, what is there not to love? And the energy, the energy on this back picture, the power, the energy there is just superb. It really captures the band and their live performance. Now, I would love to have a time machine, go back and see Iron Maiden right there, right there and then, just before Paul Diano started to be distracted, shall we say. I'd love to have seen them at that time. I know they still put on an amazing show today, obviously, they do. Doesn't matter how old they are, they just seem to be able to pull it out of the bag every time. But I would love to have seen them when they were at this particular stage, youthful, energetic, and just full of vim and vigor. It would have been absolutely stunning. So what do we have on the record? It's produced by Martin Birch, which is probably why I like it so much. Who would obviously go on to produce many records for Iron Maiden as the 80s progressed. So we have some great songs on here. Murders in the Room Org, Genghis Khan, an instrumental. Drifter, which finishes it. And of course, to begin side two, you have the classic title track, Killers. I absolutely love Killers, it's fantastic. It really is. I still remember the first time I got this. Um, I don't think it was the first Iron Maiden album I got, but it was certainly the first, I'm pretty sure it was the first of the classic trio of first albums that they did, if that makes any sense, because I think the first one I got was Somewhere in Time from 86. But this was the first, as I went back in time, so to speak. So, have you heard Iron Maiden Killers? Isn't it absolutely sensational? I honestly think it's one of the best albums they ever did. Absolutely stunning. How did it do in the charts? You might well ask. It did okay. It's not bad. The French loved it. They put it to number one. 
Was that because of murders in the room, Mark? Who can say? But they put it to number one. Um, we here in the UK, number 12. That's not bad at all. In fact, I think as a kid, I actually remember seeing this on the record racks and thinking, what the hell is that? I didn't investigate until later, obviously, but I think I remember seeing it. And the Americans, well, they put it to number 78, which is not brilliant, but obviously that was going to change as time went on. This was their first American tour when they were supporting Killers. And as I say, they went on to be massive all over the world, including obviously America. So they cracked America. Um, but at this stage, they hadn't. But they were going to very, very soon. So that is Iron Maiden Killers from 1981.